Here's our robotic welder. These, if you're going to play in the commercial world, you're going to do an eight size job. There's no way around it. You need a robotic welder. So we, we're going to have constant heat, speed, and pressure. That's the adjustments on these. So at the end of the day, end of the job, you're going to have a more consistent, more consistent weld. You're going to have a better job for your for your customer. When you're hand welding, you have to create your own air dam. You have to actually weld the material twice. This machine will do it for you in one pass. That's what basically what this is here. On GAF specifications, we tell you minimum 10,000 watt generator, and you're gonna have a maximum 100 foot long 10 gauge cord. This is what requirements for these. So this machine right here, there's speed, heat, and airflow adjustments on this machine. So ideally, when this thing is adjusted correctly, you want about that first vent hole exposed from that drive wheel and pressure wheel. If that hole nozzle is buried underneath that seam, when you go to probe it, you're gonna have a little bit that's probed open. So there's adjustments on here. All you basically do, loosen these two screws up and you can pivot it in and out or slide it all the way back. Personally, what I instruct guys to do is, is loosen that up and slide that whole carriage back from that pressure wheel and drive wheel. It allows that membrane to preheat just a little more before it completes the weld. So there's the variables to a good weld of speed, heat, and compression. When we're hand welding, we are the speed, the handgun's the heat, and the pressure is our roller. We can adjust all that on this machine. Um, this machine right here, I believe, will do up to 26 feet a minute. This machine right here will do up to 40 feet a minute. You will never, <laughs> Never weld TPO that fast. You want to use, utilize this as much as you can to try and eliminate as much hand welding as you can. These things are a machine. They're going to do whatever you tell them to do. They're not going to come in late. They're not going to come in hungover. They're not going to want to leave early. But if you put bad information into them, you're going to get a bad weld. Okay, so before we get actually welding with this, we want to make sure we understand we have to do test welds. They should be done every day. Um, you know, you might have to do them twice a day. You might have to do them three times a day, depending on whether you can have to do them multiple times in one day. Remember my formula. Again, this is a ballpark formula. Whatever your ambient temperature is, divide that by 10 and add two. That would be your speed. So let's say if it's 80 degrees outside, divide that by 10 is going to give me eight. Add two, that's 10. That's my, that's my speed, 10 feet a minute. Now, I'm not saying you got to stay there, but you have to have a baseline. So what we're going to do in this test well, we're going to start at 10 feet a minute we're gonna start at 600 degrees, and I'm gonna do a weld. And once, I, once I complete that weld, I'm gonna bump it up 100 degrees at a time. I'm gonna to go to 700 degrees, but I'm not gonna adjust my speed, and I'm gonna do another weld. And I'm gonna keep doing this till I max this machine out, which is 1148 degrees, but I'm not gonna to touch my speed. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back and we're gonna do some test cuts, and we're gonna show you what to look for to find the bottom of your weld window and the top of your weld window. Okay, well, let's get to doing some test welds. When you set this up, my drive wheel and pressure wheel, I kind of want that overhanging the seam maybe about a quarter of an inch. Um, I don't want it obviously too far. On this side of the seam, I just want it overhanging the, the, uh, the seam about a quarter of an inch. I've also got this little pizza wheel back here. It's kind of a guide. When I'm in the weld position, I slide this over. That pizza wheel kind of drops down, and it's kind of a guide. It just runs along the seam, lets me know this machine is straight. Some people use it, some people don't. It's all a matter of personal preference. So we're gonna turn this machine on. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna start at 600 degrees. I'm gonna do 10 feet a minute. And again, like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna go 100 degree increments till I max this machine out, keeping the same speed. Now this thing's hot, this thing's 600 degrees. So what really kind of worries me when people reach down in here to separate that seam, you're getting pretty close to this nozzle. Easiest way I know how to do this, tilt the machine a little bit. It'll take some pressure off that seam and just take and slide my nozzle right in there. When it engages, it's gonna weld right down the seam. I'm just gonna let it run all the way out. Just reverse the process. We're gonna let this cool down and we're gonna do some test cuts. Now I'm gonna bump this machine up to 700 degrees and just repeat this until I max it out. There's my 700 degrees. I'm up the temperature. Okay, bump this up to 800. So now I'm at 900 degrees. Never knows how Dave gets out of this stuff and you gotta start lifting heavy equipment. 
It's a thousand degrees. I can't pick that apart. Hey, Dave, can you give me a cup of coffee? Can you give me a cup of coffee? All right. So we're at 1148 degrees. That's the max of this machine at 10 feet a minute. What I want you as the viewer to pay attention to, I just peeled that apart. You'll notice that 900, 1,000, I couldn't peel that apart. 1148, I want you to see the gray. There's, grays, there's gray under this void. Something that is really important to pay attention to for the guy running this. So everybody's clear on this. This is, this is, there's a gray in here, this is a void. When we do the test cuts, we're gonna see something a little bit different. Okay, so we've done all our test welding. Um, and I actually broke Dave away from his coffee and his computer. He actually cut these up for me. Um, he actually cut them in one inch wide strips. This is our field test. Uh, you really don't want to take your membrane and pull it down the seam. This is the way you actually want to test for your film tearing bond on your seam. This is an actual ASTM test. So we're making our own test samples. So Dave cut these one inch strips and now I'm going to do them a pull them apart. I'm actually going to pull it, see how much pressure I have. Obviously, I didn't have nothing. This was at 600 degrees at 10 feet a minute. I will pull these other two, probably gonna get the same result. Nothing. Okay, now, this is 700 degrees. Okay, so I've got probably, we're looking for an inch and a half delamination. And I'm right, right at an inch and a half. So I believe we found the bottom of our weld window, 700 degrees. Now we're at 800. So here's 900. Again, we're at inch and a half, inch and a half. Okay, now we're getting up in this 1,000, 1,148 degrees. So we got a good weld at 700, 800, 900. We are about an inch and a half. So this is 1148 degrees. Remember I did the test well, this is a sample of that seam. I showed everybody that we had gray, we actually overheated this seam. So watch when I pull this. Again, we're an inch and a half. That's an inch and a half. When you start getting up to that 1,000 degrees, 1,100 degrees, 1,148 degrees, remember how I reached back and tried to peel that apart. So I couldn't do a 900, but I couldn't do a 1,000, but I could 1,148. So we already know it's too hot. Okay, so we talked about the 1,148 being too hot. So you can see this is the sample that I pulled, and I can see the gray. Now this is cooled enough, I can even take my probe, and I can't probe that open. So this, again, this roof could sit over, say you, you were 11.48 that day, the guy went back to the probe, he's not gonna probe that open. Six weeks, a month, two months, a year down the road, this is where these seams are gonna start popping. So again, it's so important that the guy that's doing the test welds pays attention to when he's, doing, when he's actually running that robot. Okay, to sum all this up, we've done all our test welds, we've done the pulls. So if you remember earlier, I said we have to find the bottom of our weld window, we find the top of the weld window, we could set our machine up in the middle. But again, it is so critical. These test welds solve so many issues before they become big problems. There is no shortcuts on this. This should be non-negotiable and should be done every, every day.